as you can see it's a bit windy today but we're going to try to find some sheltered spots and see what we can put together well all my normal spots are all mudded out so now i'm on the search for uh mullet see if i can find some mullet because it's going to be a tough day hey everybody how we doing today beautiful day here in the florida keys just got a bit of wind to deal with but i think we're going to manage uh, the other issues is it's coming out of the south southwest which is a bit different uh, so all my normal work the mangrove edges are all blown out because that's the side that the wind is coming on um, so i'm going to have to try to find some east of the island side fishing spots which i have very few of them and the other thing i need to do is try to find some mullet uh, the key today is going to be having some bait that has scent. So that's kind of what I'm on the lookout for. So uh, let's see what we can find. I heard a big old splash over here. So I'm hoping that was a school there. Um, looking for clear water is the other thing. That tends to kind of attract the fish since we're not really uh, used to the murky muddy waters yep there's mullet there all right so i gotta get ready here uh this is what it looks like when you're not behind the islands it's ripping pretty good plus it's really low tide been chasing this little tiny bait school of mullet there's only like a dozen of finger mullet but that's the only thing i found it's like fat chance i'm gonna get them but i might just drift my way to the other side of this island and uh see if I have any better luck there all right so we're right at four o'clock you can see the little X there we're on the end of the uh, outgoing tide so we're almost at the bottom of the tide uh, looks like six o'clock is the dead dead low so that's what put me out in this kind of flats area there I'm looking for those redfish schools out on the flats again I saw some uh, movement earlier, but I didn't know if those possibly are sharks or not. And because it's so windy, I had to splash quite a bit to kind of get out to this area. But I'm going to take a look, see what I see, and then uh, go back to uh, looking for bait, looking for spots out of the wind, and then uh, hopefully be able to get back. So here's another good example at low tide basically so usually fish are able to go from all the way across this island but now because the water is so low you can see it's all mudded up there so they're they're pushed out so that's why i like coming out here a couple hours before low tide and then fish hour or two afterwards uh, because they're out in the out and about the flats the edges if I find any deep spots or even cuts or even marginal depth to them, that's going to be uh, where a lot of fish are going to conjugate while they're waiting for that the water to come back up. And then they'll go back in through those little tarpon tunnels there. So uh, usually I fish the west side of the islands because our winds usually come from the east to the west. But since it's coming from the west, north, uh, west, southwest, I'm going to be uh, fishing the, uh, or prospecting the east side of this island and see what I could find. Now I'm fully on the uh, east side of this island here. Wind's blowing over, it's knocking it down, that's why it's so calm over here. But I've actually never worked this edge. Like I rarely ever work a uh, east side of an island. There's just a couple of spots out of the hundreds of uh, fishing spots I've got that are on this east side. But uh, one thing it'll do is it'll let me just kind of work this at this low tide. I'm not, I don't expect to find much, but uh, until I get to this uh, channel that cuts through. But uh, it'll allow me to kind of see if I could find any distinctive paths that might be deeper than these normal areas. And those are going to be the first and the last spots that fish are going to be pushing out of and be good ambush spots. But I'm going to work it through here, maybe see a tailing redfish or some uh, snook. But otherwise, I just want to make it down to the uh, little cut that's up here. All right, we made it to that channel opening there. Just got a portage through here. 
and get over there where deeper water is and see if there's uh, stuff hiding in that uh, channel there. That's where I did the combat tarpon fishing. And also it's going to give me the ability to get on the other side. Hopefully when the uh, tide is a little higher. Well, I made it. All that exposed stuff is basically the rock. I had to drag it through, but made it through. Go where the boats can't go and find the fish, hopefully. Ugh. Brutal. Right there's redfish tailing. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. My name is Steven. I knew it. Oh, I only have a schminnow. Oh no. Oh God, scared him. Dang it. Not prepared, not prepared. There he is. Oh, come on. Where did he go? I knew they'd be around. My perfect tailing redfish. And I blew it. It was too close, plus I had my rod there. God dang it. I'm gonna snook. One, two, three. I saw two redfish back there. Oh, they see me. Dang it. And then there's tarpon rolling in here. So I got redfish, snook, tarpon, just like I figured. They're just forced down in these any pockets, any holes. I found the redfish underneath these mats. There's that snook right there. Try not to spook everything. Oh, right there, there goes a snook there. Snook and redfish and tarp in heaven in here right now. And it's all because it can't get way back in there. So I figured this spot would be packed and it is. Having the mullet chunks or some uh, natural baits is I could just basically just drop it by that opening, which wherever the head current. Is. Oh, look at all those snook over there! Holy moly, there's a bunch snook. Look at all of them, tarpon and snook. Golly, look at all of those. Knew this was going to be a golden spot. See, there's tarpon and snook mixed in together. That big one over there was a snook. These are all tarpon. Lordy, I knew this was the golden spot. Just had to get in here at low tide. Just gonna push out in the middle here. There's also a bunch of snook every little pothole. They're just sitting in the center spot. Man, that one was a really big snook. There's the tarpon. They're all just going to be swimming around here. They can only go up so far. Well, they can exit out over there and they can exit out over there. There is kind of shallow, so they're stuck in here. Monster snook over there. Keeps coming out every once in a while. This mess. There's something moving across there, I bet. Oh, there is right underneath it. Oh, there. Oh, someone, someone not interested. That's about 10 uh, snook. Oh, that tarpon's coming. <laughs> oh, it's just before I was going to set the hook. Dang it. God, now that everything's going to be spooked. 
but there's a bunch of tarpon that'll be coming through here. There's a snooks. I think there's more snooks gonna be pushing up here. I don't have very good light. Oh, there they are. That's what those are redfish there. Just the dumb and young and dumb uh, tarpon. This thing is like a fishbowl of snook, redfish, and tarpon. Just like the tarpon, redfish, snook, all these bait get pushed down in here too, so they're stuck out of their safety zone. You can see all the tarpon rolling right up inside there. See them there? I'm just slowly working it. And then there's snook running all along these edges. All these little bait fishers all over the place. But you can see the bank right there. I have until the water gets up to the top of that bank and then uh, those fish are gone. Or, oh, there goes a the snook. So look all the tarpon up there. Sun's there, so I don't have a very good uh, angle. Oh, that's a shark. He's in the mix. Oh, there's a tarpon there. And there's a bunch of tarpon. You can see them in that sand spot there. There's a half dozen of them. And a snook just went by them. Right there as well. You can see them's going to go left to right, facing a second one there, third one in front of that. They're kind of like blocking me from entry. See, those are all tarpon. There's a tarpon. Eh, snook or tarpon? That's a snook. Look at him, little guy. I'm just a log. Look at all the tarpon. It's all tarpon in there. I got my uh, overhead camera there, drone shots. Oh, look at all of them over there in the sand spot. Look at all of them. Wouldn't even be fair fishing for these guys. Look at all of them. Holy crap. Oh, that spooked them. They're all packed in over there. Man, I don't know what to do. All of them. Oh, look at that, there's a redfish there. You wanna fight? You wanna fight? Didn't think so. There's a red, red, red. Golly, look at all of them. There goes that redfish right in the middle of the school of a uh, tarpon. Look at all these. <laughs> it's awesome. I didn't really care about catching them. Look at all of these guys. an aquarium
Golly. You can walk on top of them. There's so many. Just having fun. Golly. It's non stop. It's just a massive school. They're just keeping on going. Never ending school. I'm gurgling. More, even more and more. And I'll go underneath there, over here. Golly. Going over there, coming back in. Leave me alone, Tarpon, leave me alone. Drown in here, you're gonna get eaten by Tarpon. And as it starts shallowing up, you can kind of see they're they're all just sticking in that pool on that edge there bunch of uh, little baby snook chasing out of here. <laughs> I got them. Little guys. Like 12 inches. Catching my cast net. Got tarpon in here too. There's tarpon. Couple of them. Three, four. A oh, snook. More snook, more tarpon. They're hiding underneath this cover here. Nice mangrove snappers, snook. All right, we're out of that area. It's uh, 6.43 and it's still low tide, low enough where uh, those fish are not getting into the uh, the roots and everything. The water's still low. So I'm gonna say we hit it out there about four o'clock. I didn't move into that spot till probably about 4.30, 4.45. But I think four o'clock would have been a good time frame where I think it got skinny enough where those fish were forced out of the trees. And then it's 643 now and it's still skinny enough where they're not getting in there. So I figure probably close to uh, eight o'clock, 738 before they could start moving back up again. So four o'clock to eight, about four hours worth of uh, lockdown time that those fish are gonna be stuck in those uh, outer edges, those deeper cuts, uh, any deeper channels like that, and uh, where they're not able to hide inside these uh, islands. So that's kind of the time frames and why I say is that I usually look for a couple hours before low tide, couple till couple hours afterwards, and then after that, it gets a lot more difficult to find those fish because the majority of those fish should go right back into the trees where there's just no chance at getting at them. And then I'm looking at just a smaller proportion that are out about along the edges. So that's why it's the prime time. While the tide is still down, I'm working this cut. I see a tail over there. It doesn't look like the normal sharks that I've been seeing sneak up on it but there's a main channel here main channel over there and then this is kind of a cut through between the islands and it's a uh, very skinny so I'm primarily looking for redfish tailing I could have caught a whole bunch of other stuff the tarpon snook redfish in that hole there but that's not quite exciting Oh, right there. That's what I'm looking for. 
See, I think that's a redfish tail, and that's not sharks. Yeah, that's redfish. Oh yeah, baby. I knew you'd be here. Yeah, that's a redfish. That is what I've been wanting. Want you, baby. Want you. Oh, this is perfect. God. You could tell because usually the sharks will have the the pack and the tail even up on top. This one they don't have the peck fin that stays erect so it's primarily just the tail so i'm going to try to go oh shoot that was a bad i want to go past it yeah that's got to be that's the redfish there that is my redfish oh jesus i want to get this weedless get past it yeah there he is there show yourself oh oh he's looking for it Come on, baby. Oh, no. Oh, no. There he goes over there. was a perfect cast what are you doing why are you not cooperating oh that was perfect oh, I should have went with the fly better softer presentation on this very skinny water they're very skittish golly the idea is like you can't land the lure right on their head so I want to cast past them but in front of them and then reel it up until I get close and then just let it sink down and then work it towards them. Golly, that was so perfect. Man. All right, I'm calling it a day. Got a nice sunset going on here. The tide is slowly rising. But uh, today was a perfect example of a prospecting day slash follow-up day so i had found that spot the uh, couple actually it's been about four or five days but uh and i did that tarpon jungle combat video and i went in there and uh it wasn't exactly that low tide but i was finding tarpon so i kind of knew that once that tide got really low where all those fish were flushed out of the trees that that place was going to get pack full of stuff and it was redfish snook and just a thousand tarpon in there i mean there's just so many in there i didn't really care about catching them it was more interested interesting watching them and filming them uh plus i really wanted a tailing redfish today is what i was really going after but that's the kind of thing is though you can go prospect and it's not necessarily finding fish you're finding spots that have those characteristics that hold fish that's even more important then you take a look and you go back at the prime tide for that spot and then you see if it's going to be a valuable spot or not and even then you still go back to it because it might be a mid tide where it's a really a hot spot and fish are moving through so you got to kind of keep working it but that's kind of my process is i'll i'll run through all these spots and just kind of hit them 
and then I'll rate them like, eh, does this look like it's gonna hold fish at a different time of the day? And like that one there, I was like, yeah, it looks good now. And I think if it, when the water gets low, it's gonna be excellent. And that's the kind of result. So that spot there is gonna be kind of a evergreen spot, meaning I can go there pretty much 365 days a year. As long as I'm there at the right tide, there's gonna be fish in there because that's just how it's gonna be. And then uh, also, regardless of the wind, which direction doesn't matter because it's such a tight confined space is pretty much going to be wind blocked so that's one of those spots where we're just going to be cherry and uh, i can go back anytime i want to not especially interesting for me to fish because it looks kind of easy but uh you never know you get a few hard days in a row and you just want to bend a rod got that spot there so anyways uh thanks for watching and i will see you next video bye Look at the sunset, the birdies.